Okay, guys, let's talk about this stuff because if you have these memorized, then you won't have to use a calculator. So, 2 to the 4th power is 16 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. What's 16 times? One more 2. 3 to the 3rd, everybody knows that. Who knows 3 to the 4th? 3 to the 3rd? 3 times 3 times 3. That's how we're going to do that. All right. Memorize one more. You need to write this down. What about negative 27? That's negative 3 to the 3rd. Negative 27 is negative 3 to the 3rd. Cool. All righty, guys. All we're doing is we're making fractional exponents look like radicals or radicals look like fractional exponents. So easy. Let me show you what's going on here. It's all about that. It's all about that. Like everything else that you just wrote, it's really just about that. You just need to memorize that. So this, that is called a fractional exponent. But you know what? That doesn't sound sophisticated enough. So on tests or quizzes, you're going to see that called a rational exponent. And y'all, it's so easy. Y'all have been doing this the whole entire time. You just didn't know it. The top number of your fraction, the top number of your fraction is really the exponent. It's really the exponent. The bottom piece of the fraction is the root of the radical. Yep, you sure do have to memorize that. You're either dealing with a rat or a rad. Rat is rational exponent, rad is a radical. All right, so we're going to hop all over the packet because it's fun. Let's take a look at number one. Number one is x to the 3 over 5. We're going to convert that to radical form. Ready? All radicals have this thing. Remember, the denominator is the root. The denominator in number one is a 5. You need to put a 5 right there. Remember the top is really the exponent, so the exponent is really 3. So put the exponent inside. That's it. That's all you do. So see the 3 at the top? It goes on the inside. See how we wrote it on the inside right there? And then where would the 5 come from? Where else do you see the 5? Denominator. That's how it is every time. Every time. That's all it is. So let's just make sure everybody has that. If I wrote x to the 3 sevenths, and I draw this little thing, and I put an x right here, what number goes right here? What goes right here? 3. See the 3? The top is really the exponent. The root is underneath the fraction bar. Just like roots are underground, the root is underneath the fraction bar. So it goes there. Let's try that one more time. I'm not too confident I heard everybody give me a good answer here. Let's do 4 over 13. That's going to be fun. That is so fun. I am going to draw a radical sign. I'm going to draw an X right here. What goes as the exponent for X? 4. four, four. What's the root? So 13. Okay, that makes me feel better. Good job. All right, we're going to save 2 and 3 for just a few more minutes later. In the meantime, let's flip over to problem 7. So for problem 7, we're putting it back as an exponent. So if you notice, I have a radical here, but what I'm missing is the number that's right there. What is it understood to be? One. Square root. This is a square root. So it's understood to have a 2 right there. If you do not see a number, it's understood to be a 2. So if you don't see a number on the outside, what is it? 
2. So to write this as a fractional exponent, it is going to be 3 over 2. That's right, 3 over 2. See this 2 on the outside? That's still just the exponent. Let's rework problem 8. Problem A is going to be the fifth root of x squared. See how there's a 2 on the outside? You can just stick it right there next to the letter x. These mean the same exact thing. Let's write it as a fractional exponent. What's the fraction? 5 over 2 over 5. 2 over 5. 2 over 5. All right, one more before we move on to level two. Let's take a look at problem 12. We can do problem 12. That's going to be x to the what? Uh, three. Four, over Four over three. Very good. All right, look at that. We're halfway done. Let's go back to that page that we were at. Uh, this page. All right, so let's go back to page uh, one, problem two. So now we're looking at this. Guys, if you notice, problem two has a fractional exponent, but it is an improper fraction. So make sure you're paying attention. Zone back in if you're zoning out. F five over four. What is five over four as a mixed number? One and one fourth, perfect. Watch what I do. If you blink, you're going to miss it. So we're going to rewrite this x with the whole number 1 and then the 1 fourth. So there's 1 and 1 fourth, which is 5 fourths. That's all I did. Just rewrote it as a mixed number. However, I got to write it with a radical sign. All of your whole numbers go on the outside of the radical sign. So when I draw this thing right here, that whole number x to the first power goes right there. Whole numbers on the outside. The remainders go on the inside. Remember the top was the exponent, the bottom is the root because the roots grow underground. That's it. That's answer number two. All right, take a look at number three. Everybody see number three? Yeah. We're going to play what does one have that the other one doesn't. So look at number three. Then look at problem number five. What does problem five have that problem three does not? Parentheses, Parentheses and a negative. Very, very good. Y'all. Parentheses is what's going to separate the A's from the B's. Parentheses are so important. No parentheses means the 6. 6 is just 6. It doesn't have an exponent at all. But the X does. The X is the only one that has an exponent. So when we go to write this in radical form, remember all whole numbers go outside of the radical sign. That 6 is a whole number. It's going to go right here. Then I'm going to draw a radical sign. I'm going to put the x in there. Then I'm just going to break up the exponent. Remember, the top is the exponent. The bottom is the root. That's it. That's answer number 3. Let's keep going. Let's go ahead and talk about problem five since I brought it up. All right, so first of all, problem five, when you guys see 27, you don't see 27 anymore. Remember, if you see 27, that's three to the third. And I just told you, because I knew we were working this problem, negative 27 is what to the third? Very good, thank you. You better remember that. All right, let me show you how problem five works. We're going to replace the negative 27 with a negative 3 to the third. That negative 27 has right there. 
That's the same as that value. I just rewrote the way it looks, which you have to do. I'm going to recopy the x, and I'm going to recopy the 3 halves. Parentheses means distribute. So we're going to distribute the 3 halves to both of those pieces in here. So now it's going to look like this, negative 3 to the third times 3 halves. Then you have x, and that's 2 3 halves. All right, let's focus on this 3 right here. So remember, we had negative 27. Negative 27 doesn't give us anything. You have to rewrite it as the exponent. So we rewrote negative 27, and then we distributed the 3 halves. What's 3 times 3 over 2? That's right. So this becomes negative 3 to the 9 over 2. And remember, the x was just x to the 3 over 2. Both of these, both of these are improper's. Y'all, what's 9 over 2 as a mixed number again? Or a decimal? What's 9 over 2 as a decimal? 4.5. This is 4.5. Cool. What's this one? Uh, 1.5. That's it. So this is going to be negative 3 to the 4 times negative 3 to the 1 half. There's your 4.5 right there. 4 and then 1 half and 0.5. Y'all know is the same thing. Now let's break up x. x 3 over 2. Remember 3 over 2 was 1 and a half. There's your 1, there's your half. That, okay. That has a whole number. Where else is there a whole number? Right here. Both of those are going on the outside. If you break your concentration, you're going to lose it. Both of the, yeah. Yeah, yep. You were drumming. You have an AirPod in. You were glazed over. It looked like you were looking out in the rotunda. And you talked. You can't do that. You can't do that. So this is going to be, y'all, what's negative 3 times negative 3? Pay attention. What's negative? Thank you. What's negative 3 times negative 3? Positive 9. So this negative 3 to the fourth power is 81. This is 81x. So I knocked out these. Those are whole numbers. Now look. These are the bad guys. These have fractions. They don't get out of radical jail. They stay in radical jail. So I'm going to draw a radical, and I'm going to put the negative 3 and the x in jail. That's it. That's the answer. Piece of cake. What's the real world application of this equation? Scientific. Logic. All right, let's do problem number four. Problem number four has parentheses, which means the four and the x squared is getting five over two. Now, Air drumming, air guitaring, bebopping your head and talking, you're going to miss it if you break concentration. So you guys don't do what the three stooges up here are doing. Let's talk about four. Guys, you don't see a four anymore. Four is broken down to its perfect square. What times itself makes four? Two. Then we're going to rewrite it like that. If you don't rewrite it like that, you're going to have to sit around and use a calculator, and everybody's going to be on problem 10 while you're on problem 1. Do you have to use a calculator? You don't need one. You can't. We just broke concentration. Let's keep going. All right. So now we are going to distribute. Why do I get to distribute? Because there's parentheses. If there's parentheses, you get to distribute. 
All right, so remember, we had the 2 squared times 5 over 2. We have x squared times 5 over 2. And then, now we're right here. Guys, these twos are going to cancel out because one is on top and one is on the bottom. Same over here. Those twos are going to cancel. So you're going to end up with 2 to the 5th times x to the 5th. Don't box that in. That's not right. All of your numbers raised to a whole number have to be multiplied back up. What's 2 to the 5th? Y'all should know that. 32. Now look, we were supposed to write that in radical form, but I don't have any fractional exponents, so that's the answer. If you don't have any fraction exponents, you don't have any radicals. That's it. That's number four. Let's look at number six. Number six is 11 to the 3 halves and then x to the 1 half. Which one of those is the improper fraction? 3 over 2. Y'all know what 3 over 2 is. What is 3 over 2? 1. 1 over 2. 1 and a half. 1, 1 half. Uh, X, y'all, X is just a plain old-fashioned fraction. It's not improper. There's nothing that we can break up. So to write this in radical form, all your whole numbers go on the outside. All your fractions get locked in the radical jail. This is a whole number, so it goes out here. Then these two guys are going to be put in jail. The top number is the exponent, so both of these guys have an exponent of 1. The bottom number is the root, which is a 2. You don't really have to write it when it's a 2, but I'm going to go ahead and write it. That's radical form. Box it in. Okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> so, first of all, anytime you have something like this, the bottom number below the, you know what grows below the ground? Root. root. Anything below a fraction bar is a root. Anything above a fraction bar is really the exponent. So, where'd that 2 come from? Where's the root? Under, under the fraction bar. Cool. So that two, first of all, one half plus one half is not two, so we didn't add them together. I just thought you would add the ones together. Oh, I don't add the ones together. The two came from the denominator. Uh, you. You good where all these 11s came from? Uh, I don't know where the second one came That one right there? We broke up your improper. Three over two is 1.5, right? There's your one. There's your 0. 0.5. Whole numbers on the outside, fractions on the inside. Okay. Yes, <laughs> All right. Let's keep going. Let's take a look at problem number nine. We're going to love number nine. I'm going to draw a heart around number nine because it's just so amazing. All right, here is what problem nine says. I know that I'm off the packet, but there's not enough room in the packet. No, we did not already do this one. All right, ready? Okay, do y'all see that? What does that say? In your head, what does it say? Five to what power? That's right. You better drop that 25 and write it like that if you want to get the right answer. 
The letters don't matter. Just rewrite the letters. It's the numbers that are going to get us. Okay, this time we're putting them in fraction form. See this root right here? See that four? That's going to be the denominator for every fraction. So it's going to be 5 squared over 4. It's going to be x to the first power over 4. It's going to be y. What is y's exponent? 3, Three over what? Four, two, 3 over 4. What grows underground? Roots. Oh, shiznit. What did you say? He didn't say anything. Stop talking. This, that's making me crazy. I can't stand that. That's a 2 over 4. What does 2 over 4 simplify to? Over 2. you got to simplify your fractions, guys. Here's the final answer. Box that in. I'm going to do y'all's your classwork with you today, just so you know. I was going to say homework, but we're finishing it. If I'm working with you, we're not having homework today. So we're all going to finish it.